course you would take that. Of course you'd take that before the game. It's going to win. You'd take a win against any team. Welcome back to another episode of the Fans Panel. Following the weekend's ridiculous victory in what was probably Leeds fans' most favourite game of the season, we move ahead to another very difficult fixture in which we're probably underdogs again. We've got Liverpool this Monday night, and today we're joined by Chris from the Redmen TV and Jack joined us once again from the OEFC Fan Zone. Thank you very much for coming on, guys. Jack, we'll touch on the game from last weekend quickly. What, what a win. Uh, 10 men, which makes it even sweeter. Super Stuart Dallas. Has there been a better victory than that this season for Leeds fans? And ultimately, can we take it into this week, into the game this Monday night, which is, again, a massive fixture? Well, the short answer is no. And I think sweeter is probably the, the perfect word to describe it. Like for me personally, I have no disliking towards City like I do other teams in Manchester. But, you know, <laughs> that Bielsa Guardiola relationship, I find it quite hard to dislike them. But the reason why for me it was so sweet is that what they are achieving as a team, and albeit it wasn't their strongest team, that team was worth, I, I, I couldn't tell you exactly how much more, but but a lot more. But for me as well, we saw a different side to Leeds where we were on the back foot of a game, especially for the last 45 minutes, obviously down to 10 men. So it was quite interesting to see how we play being under the cosh a little bit. Mm. But, Moving forward, I think confidence is at an all-time high after that game. So yeah. hopefully we can take it into Liverpool. Chris, it's been a topsy-turvy season for Liverpool and their fans. Obviously, what do you think the main reasons for that have been? You've got the injuries with Van Dijk going at the start of the season. Then it seemed like everybody in the Liverpool squad was getting injured and it just wasn't a good time for, for Liverpool and their fans. What what do you think the re- other reasons, apart from the injuries, have been for, for, for not a, a very positive season compared to the last few that you've had? It's tough, isn't it? I think it, it all starts with the injuries. I think everybody knows that. Um, and it's not to say that other teams haven't had injuries. Liverpool just seem to have more or maybe more higher profile or more important players that have gone out for longer because every team has struggled with injuries this season. Uh, we've had a lot of muscle injuries. I've heard a lot of different reasons um, as to why that might be. Um, but uh, ultimately, when you when you lose your centre off, when you don't replace your fourth choice centre off, which sounds crazy, but when you're competing against the squad as good as you've just mentioned there, Manchester City's, yeah. you can't go in to that race under tooled almost, can you? Uh, and that's what Liverpool did. Dejan Lovren goes, and you know people have their opinions about Dejan Lovren. I would have said that he was the best best fourth choice centre half in the Premier League last season. And whether you think he's good or not, as a fourth choice centre half, I thought he was really, really good. Um, and he turned it around a little bit and didn't make as many mistakes as people said. So you lose that, you then drop him for Bino and Henderson into the middle of the park. You then start to lose the midfield battle each and every week. And then the strikers don't play quite as well because the midfield behind them is not the same. Everybody knows this is a team game, and, and unfortunately yeah. for Liverpool, you know those big pieces of the puzzle are, are, have meant that they're they're just not as as good going forwards either. You touched on there saying City, obviously, the, obviously them being your main rivals, obviously this season. The difference is the squad depth probably, and like you say, the injuries don't help that. So the squad depth this year has been been a massive, a massive key for you guys. Obviously, not doing as well as you had. The fixture last time when we played was a fantastic game, the first game of the season. Since the start of the season and throughout the course of the campaign, how do we think each other's seasons have gone? Jack, we'll start with you looking at Leeds and Liverpool and then Chris, we'll, we'll come on to you about both teams as well. Jack, what do you think? Yeah, well, I'll, I'll start with Liverpool first. I think I think Chris basically mentioned it a lot of the time, his injuries, I think, obviously to key players. Correct me if I'm wrong here, but I think it's obviously Van Dijk got that horrific tackle, then Gomez and Matty, I think Henderson more recently as well. I think they're all out for the season as well. So that's, it's a big blow. And he said as well, you know, every team's got their injuries, but like Van Dijk's been out for the majority of the season and he is by far their best centre-back and arguably mm. the best centre-back in the league or maybe even the world if you want to take it that far. But, you know, every team relies on a certain amount of players, especially at the back as well. So I think for them, injuries have definitely hindered that. Maybe to the extent that they'd finish seventh or wherever they are now, I'm not too sure. And as well, I think key players, uh, like I said, I don't follow them. Liverpool nowhere near as much as Leeds, so I might mm. sound a bit off when I say this, but players like Mane, not scoring as many as last season. Am I right in saying that, Chris? Would spot on, mate. Absolutely yeah. spot on. And even Trent as well, maybe not. Obviously, I know he scored the winner the last game, but mm. he's come under a bit of stick as well, so... I don't know what that boils down to me. I think Chris would probably be better off answering that question. Maybe it'd be pressure or something. Obviously, Liverpool 
Liverpool are a big club, you know, the they haven't won the Premier League and nothing. Whenever they lose, probably every well, everybody. Yeah. Whether it be rival fans are quick to jump on the back. So I think it is, it is a lot of pressure. Playing for any Premier League club, I think more so when you're newly crowned Premier League champions, I think everybody wants to see you fall in a way. Mm. I, I agree with that. I think I think you spot on there, mate. I think you know there is an, an element to everybody raising the game against the champions. It's it's always been a thing. It's why people say it. Um, but also, you know, we were toe to toe with Manchester City for the best part of three seasons. Yeah. You know, and and you know that ninety seven point season, that ninety nine point season, and Champions Leagues and all that type of stuff, and everything else that everyone else has had to deal with in the pandemic and stuff. But I think just going toe to toe for that long. Last year they came off and they bounced back. I think Liverpool are in that year where it's it was just one season too many with all the injuries and stuff like that. And yeah, for, for me, Liverpool can and will bounce back from this next season. Hopefully we will make the Champions League, but right now it's it's a tough ask. What do you what do we think both for, for, for Leeds' this season? Obviously, we have touched on Liverpool there. What do we think for Leeds? We've had probably well, a, a fantastic season if you're looking at the overall overall standings and where we are in the league. Jack, how do you think it's gone? And then Chris, we'll ask you after. Yeah, well, if somebody had said to me, you could be well in the chance of finishing top half, I'd have snapped the hand off straight away. Um, for any team to finish top half in the first season, the Premier League, I think it's a fantastic achievement. And when we're playing the football, what we're playing, attacking football, which you could arguably say has never been seen in the Premier League before from a newly promoted team or any promoted team or any team in the Premier League, sorry. I think at first, the media especially was kind of like, we'll be able to get found out. And obviously it goes back to the same old argument about burnout, which has been the case every season, which once again gets proved to be false and... I can't say anything like that, but uh, yeah, which gets proved to be false every season. I think uh, the, that Man City game showed that more than ever. And yeah. I think Les Scott was saying as well before the game about Leeds hitting a ceiling, which was quite ironic. Obviously, Leeds went and scored in the, the 92nd minute. But no, Leeds have been fantastic this year. And I think we don't ever have that quit in us. Even been down to 10 men, I would have argued to say any other team down to 10 men would have committed that many bodies forward in the 90th mm. minute. And we could have scored two more. You know what I mean, we could have scored with Rufino and Edison yeah. made that save. And then he got wiped out by Fernandinho as well. So, you know, it's, it's amazing football to watch and the longer Bielsa stays, the better and give him a lifetime contract in my opinion. Yeah. Chris, what, Chris, what do you think? Obviously looking outside yeah. as a, as a opposing fan, how do you think league season has been? I'm going to have to tell you this before I go into this season. Uh, I've got a bit of a soft spot for Leeds. I went to university in Leeds. Um, oh, mate, class. And, uh, and I, I used to go to the game when I was there, like, because you just signed Robbie Fowler. So I went to just watch Robbie play and stuff like that. Like, even though you pained me when I came out the train station, <laughs> the club shop was there and Robbie Fowler's shirt was on the back and I was dying inside because we'd sold him to you. Yeah. But I got over it and I started going the game and actually watching a little bit of Leeds that season and stuff. Uh, and I enjoyed it. Like So, yeah, um, got a bit of a soft spot for the city and, and the team, obviously. Um, I really liked that first game of the season was horrendous from a Liverpool fan's perspective. But, I mean, it shows you, it actually shows you a little what Liverpool's problems are. You know, that early ball for, is it Harrison's goal, the first one? Yeah. Um, and it's straight over the top of Trent Alexander-Arnold and it cuts inside and scores. That's actually been our Achilles heel all season long. So thanks for showing everyone that one, lads. Really appreciate <laughs> that. Everybody's just jumped on that bandwagon. Nice one. Had a, a tough time of it because of that goal. Um, I think I, I think when you... I, I said I thought Leeds could get top 10. And for me... You know, they do play exciting football. It's well documented. Every football fan loves Bielsa, don't they? Um, but I think the the real respect is where you look at the teams that are above them, and maybe you look at a few teams that are below. I mean, the fact that you you know the, there was a lot of talk about Aston Villa this season yeah. early on in the year. You're above them. There was a lot. There's always a lot of talk about Wolves because they are now Premier League. You yeah. know, pushing on for Europe. You're above them. And then what are you talking about? Your Arsenal's, your Tottenham's, your Liverpool's, your Chelsea's. Come yeah. on, like, I think that's an incredible season, isn't it? Like, you just have to look at that. Look at all the, you, you level on points with Arsenal, for goodness sakes. Arsenal Football Club and you're newly promoted. That's a brilliant season. And you might be a little bit disappointed that you're not higher. But come on, what a season for Leeds. 
Yeah, no, definitely. It's been, well, like you've just said there, when you put it into perspective and where, where we've come from, from last season, it's just been magnificent, really. It? When you look at the teams around us, two weeks ago, we had Tottenham and Everton that could have gone ahead of us if they'd won the games in hands and stuff like that. And obviously there was Chelsea and West Ham. Now there's just Chelsea and West Ham. So in a two-week swing, we've passed two of those lads. And it's about looking forwards and not looking over your shoulder. It's about making sure the Chelsea and West Ham look over their shoulder. And it's about, unfortunately for you guys, us going and doing the business against you on Monday night because we've got something to fight for there. And whether we will or we won't, I'm not sure. You know, Pep Linders, our assistant manager, has said last season that, you know, intensity is our identity. And, and I get that. And Leeds are very much intensity is their uh, identity, but also consistency was Liverpool's identity last season. And unfortunately, you can't expect consistent performance from an inconsistent side. And that's what we've had this season and why we may struggle between now and the end of the season or why we may go on and get a Champions League. It's too hard to call, to be honest. And there's a lot of games still to play. With the quality you've got in the squad as well, it's always possible, isn't it? With people like Mane, Salah, Firmino, it's, those, those points are always definitely going to be there for you to pick up. Jack, with the loss of Cooper to that red card last weekend, will it have rocked the boat a little bit with the back four, with the solid defensive work that we've been doing the past few games? Or will it be almost a situation of a, every cloud has a silver lining with the fact that Robin Cock can come back in and maybe get a, a run of a run of games towards the end of the season after a, a, an unfortunate injury earlier on in the season. What how do you think that's gonna alter the defence and, and is it not a good thing, but is it a, maybe a, every negative has a side positive to it as well with the fact that Cock can come back in and, and maybe get a run of form? Yeah, obviously like you said, Cock is back now and we've got no injuries in defence. Uh as of time of recording, fingers crossed. Um, so, yeah, the options are there to swap and change. And so far this season, I think we've played something like, but obviously not bang on, but roughly a third of our games without Liam Cooper. So I think we're well equipped to, and we're used to without Cooper playing. So I don't think it'd be that much of rocking the boat as of such. Um, albeit we do concede more goals without him. I think it's like 0. 0.2 more goals per game without him. So... You know, I think we've got we've got good options there. Cox proven he's a quality centre back for a great price, and Strauch has stepped up whenever we've needed yeah. him and done a fantastic job as well. So, obviously, it's never good to lose a player for three games, but I feel like we've got the adequate replacements and two solid options who can step in and do a fantastic job. Definitely, boys. Can I get a score prediction and how we think the game's going to go on Monday night? Jack, we'll start with you, and then we'll go to Chris. Yeah, it's it's hard not to be positive after that Man City game. I think um, I'm gonna I'm I'm gonna go for a one nil win. I think we we do a clean sheet um, at home, Ellen Road. Albeit not fans, there. it's one of them games in it where you think, imagine if fans are at that game. That's yeah. what the Premier League's all about. But you know, it's it is what it is. We are where we are. But I think uh, yeah, I'm gonna go one nil. Uh, if you ask me who's gonna score, I'm going to say Rafinha. I'm gonna say one nil Rafinha. I'd 100% take that before the game. Chris, what do you think? Of course you would take that. Of course you'd take that before the game. It's going to win. You'd take a win against any team before the game. Um, I'm going to go. It's going to be a little bit of a Barney game. Again, it was 4-3 earlier in the season. Mm -hmm. We'll get to Zatrick, whatnot. But uh, I think it's going to be like a 3-2, something like that. Both teams flying into each other and, and looking for things. I think, you know, we're quite fortunate in that Leeds won't play the way that is successful against Liverpool. I just don't see them being that Burnley-esque low block side. Yeah. Um, although for the first time this this week, I actually saw that you can do it, which may be a little bit of a concern. But yeah, I just think it's going to be a really one of those entertaining Premier League games between Leeds and Liverpool. I mean, fingers crossed because the game that started the season, like you just touched there, was, was high scoring, exciting. It was a great way to kick off the Premier League. But a fixture this Monday night, which I'm sure we're all looking forward to. Tough one for Leeds, but when you've got Bielsa and Dallas playing at centre mid, right back, left back, left mid, right mid, and now even a striker, anything can happen. So I'm sure we'll look forward to the game Monday night. Guys, thank you very much for coming on.